Hello, good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live. And with me this evening, I have a uh, member of parliament and leader of the Democratic Party, Ms. Uh, Williams. Good evening, how are you doing? Good evening, Oral, and a very good evening to all who are viewing this program. Thank okay. you for having me. And thank you for uh, accepting the invitation. So how are things going these days in, in the uh, political world? Quite, <laughs> quite tumultuous. Um, uh, within, within government, for sure, you know, we, um, yeah, we were going through some, some difficult times, no two ways about it, but um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get out, we're going to get out, and we're going to get out an experience wiser uh -huh. out, of, out of all of this. Are you surprised the way things have um, dragged on for the last uh, four weeks? Yes, yes, I, I, I have been. I have been surprised by um, especially government's reaction to um, the change, the change in coalition in the, in, in the parliament and um, government insistence, even after the motion of non-confidence that was passed on the 30th of September, mm -hmm. you know, to basically insist that, first of all, that they were not going anywhere. So in other words, they, they, they did not respect um, a decision by the majority of parliament. That's one thing. Um, they did not respect a decision taken by the governor, is a second thing. And now they have made it a sort of, well, you do this in order for us to, for or, in order for us to tender our resignation or make our position available. So yeah, as, as things went along and every day practically you heard a different stance taken, I was, I was surprised by the actions, yes. But now they I understand that the resignation will be submitted to the governor tomorrow. Yeah, they're, they're, as they call it, they're, they're handing over or the giving up, making available of their position. Again, um, from reports, it seems as if that's going to happen um, on Wednesday. How do you feel about the whole affair in terms of, you know, it's now five years uh, that we're in this status, yeah. but it seems like we, we haven't matured at all. You know, it's, it's, you can definitely see that um, it's, it's, a, it's a learning process for us. We haven't become country in October, on October the 10th, 2010, but for St. Martin as a country, mm -hmm. um, there was no blueprint. There is no experience for us to go by. And so you see that as we go along, we are, we are learning. And every time you have a situation like this, you realize that... Um, some of our laws need to be adjusted. Um, some of them need to be detailed and further worked out because y you really you don't you don't have you don't have a cadre within which these kind of things will play themselves out. I believe looking at our 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 political development, especially as a country, where for the first time as a, as Saint Martin, um, you have we have our own ministers and our members of parliament. So how people deal with that, how we deal with those positions, especially those of us who um, are appointed in positions, um, take the position of minister or so, you know, it, um, you, you can clearly see where we are, we are testing ourselves. How far can we go within the context of the law? And that is some of what you're seeing, you're seeing playing out now. Now, um, you was Prime Minister for four years. Yeah, that's right. And uh, 2013, we had a similar situation. Mm -hmm. How different is this now than then? You know, Oral, what, what, what you see is that the, um, in fact, in 2012, we also had a change of government. At that time, it was um, the DP and the UP and um, some independent members of parliament. When that changed, because of what, of a, as I like to call it, a rumbling in Parliament. So you had a shifting of alliances within Parliament, which has its effect on government. And at that time, the up to was, was, was clamoring for um, dissolution of Parliament because every time you say election, what has to happen is the dissolution of parliament. So while people say, yeah, we will, we will get elections going and so, but first of all, you need a dissolution of parliament. And then the law prescribes that once the decision is taken, which can be taken by government, 
to dissolve parliament, then elections must follow. So you had it in 2012, and then when things change around in 2013, you had the same thing again. Those who were actually on their way out were saying, why can't we have elections? In 2012, mm -hmm. as well as 2013, I was like, but the reason to use this, what has become by now famous article, or infamous, depends on how you look at it, Article 59, I say there is, while we don't have a political history to go by in using that article, there is a political history behind Article 59. And it could never be so that a government would seek to dissolve the parliament that appointed them in the first place because the parliament has an issue with the government that is there. Because then, yes, things would be turned around. And you could have, you could have as many legal ad advices as you can get. And we hear a lot about the advices that are in favor of what the government now has done. But even more so, there are so many that are basically telling you, and which to me is the premise. The premise is that you have the parliament and ministerial responsibility, a bedrock of our constitution, actually means that if the parliament does not have, the con does not have confidence in the ministers that the parliament put there, then the, they, they have to tender their resignation. They have to make their position available. It can be the other way around. It can be like some would like to put it, oh yeah, it's like a tit for tat. This is not a tit for tat. This is the parliament elected by the people, all 15 members. And whether you like every member, you like some of them, you like only the one who you voted for, whatever the case may be oral, those are the representatives of the people. Any majority in parliament basically carries the day. The government is appointed by the people who are elected to represent the people. So by the parliamentarians, they are appointed. And the only reason why we took it over, this Article 59, the one about dissolving parliament, that the government can, and actually it doesn't say the government can. It says that the Article 59, the, the parliament can be dissolved by national decree. A national decree is actually a decision by the government formalized in a decree to be signed by the government, by a minister, one or more ministers, and the governor. But well, when can that happen? That well, has to be some see, special and, circumstance. And that's, and that's the thing. So we don't have a history here on St. Martin for the use of that article. But in other places, especially within the Dutch Kingdom, former Netherlands Antilles, in the Netherlands itself, it really requires special circumstances. What are these special circumstances? If there is a, an impasse in Parliament, which you can have, imagine that within the, the Parliament, so between the 15 members of Parliament, no groups or two or more groups want to work together to form a majority. Imagine that when you had a situation like we had it now, where you had three members of the up-led coalition um, broke away from that coalition. So you had three members, that, that meant that the up coalition remained with seven, and then you had five opposition members. Suppose none of those groups wanted to work together. So the five opposition members, which include the, um, the Democratic Party and the, and the Alliance, we sat back, we said, no, we are not working with anybody. The three who broke away say, well, we are not going back with the seven. And the opposition is not working with the seven either. You would have an impasse in Parliament. You would have a situation where you, you really can't govern. But that was not the case. Immediately with the passing of the, um, of the motion of non-confidence against the ministers, you had a majority of eight that declared to the governor that they were willing to um, appoint and be part of the next government of St. Martin. So you didn't have a situation where actually there was an there was issue in parliament or with parliament. So um, when you look at what has uh, developed over this period of time now from, Septem from uh, September 30th, yeah, right? right? Uh -huh. It appears as if 
the governor mm -hmm. hands were tied. You know, it appears that people who don't understand what's going on, yeah. like the governor didn't know what to do. Uh -huh. Is that really the well, case? Well, well, actually, actually, the governor's first decision, as he communicated it mm -hmm. to the prime minister and the other ministers, that was on point. The, go the governor was quite clear. But what happened over time is that what you're seeing is that the government, the Council of Ministers, is being rewarded for not operating according to the Constitution. That's what you're actually seeing because the government refused. The government refused to do what is one of the basic consequences of a motion of non-confidence, and that's to make your position available. That's Article 33. There is no two ways to interpret Article 33. The, gov the government refused. They refused. And you see this thing oral about um, elections. Yeah, they're calling for elections because they can dissolve parliament. The government has been fencing with that card ever since. The government has been fencing. The Prime Minister has been walking around, you know, if, if this member doesn't act like this or that member acts like this, we're we, we going to dissolve Parliament and call election. It's not the first time now the, 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 the government has been fencing. That's a card that they constantly held up. We, we, we can dissolve Parliament, so we will do it and we will have elections. We'll make sure that we have, that we have elections. But when the governor first responded to the mm -hmm. government, that was on point. The, the governor at that time indicated a few things. One, he said to the government, he said, the, um, the, there is nothing that stands in the way of the coalition of eight forming um, a new government, appointing a new government. Governor, um, um, His Excellency Dr. Randall Eugene Holliday was very clear. And he told the government, he said, as of September the 30th, you ministers, are actually, um, you have lost the confidence of Parliament. When that happens, you basically have to tender your resignation. The governor told the government that. Secondly, the governor said in, the, in his letter to the government, he said, you as a government that has no confidence from the Parliament, you can only deal with current matters. And thirdly, dissolving parliament is not considered a current matter. In other words, you can't deal, you can't present me with um, a decree to dissolve parliament. However, the government persisted, persisted, and they said, no, we ain't going nowhere, we're not tendering our resignation. You, governor, you have to sign that decree. They brought in the advices that they collected, which they knew were in their favor, but presented none of um, an equal amount, if not more, of advices that are saying the opposite and are saying, government, you were supposed to tender your resignation. Up until the day, up until today, we have heard, for example, one of our local experts, um, Mr. Ralph Richardson, on a radio program. He was very clear where that point is concerned. And at the end of the day, I think when the governor realized that the government was not going anywhere, and not to allow the country, St. Martin, to go through any further embarrassment, then the governor asks for this advice um, from a panel of three judges, in their, not in their capacity as a judge, but rather um, you know, as, as, as members the, of, the, of the judiciary. And, um, and now they rendered an advice, which like most of the advices are saying yes, Article 59 is in the Constitution. Um, it can be applied by the government via a national decree. But also in that advice, they also refer to the fact that Article 33, which is um, the premise for the ministerial resp responsibility, is very, very clear. The question is, and in my opinion, the decision of Parliament um, about not having confidence in the government supersedes, supersedes because the government has been appointed by parliament. What we have seen over the years overall is that the, um, because 
of the newness and people not being sure of how others will act, the persons elected by the people of St. Martin, um, they are not ending up in the executive seats. No member of parliament, no, I mustn't say no member, hardly any member of parliament wants to take the risk to basically go in an executive seat and become prime minister or minister and give up their seat in parliament because of the uncertainty of being in that in that position and then and then and then this 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 um this thinking that has been developed whereby um it's as if members of parliament if you join with a coalition or some even belonging to the same party mm -hmm. feel that they should be able to appoint their minister, and then that is their minister. That in itself brings a certain division in government and in the coalition. So rather than having a collective government, a collective council of ministers, you have this separation according to who put forward um, the candidate for minister. Now, uh, a, a lot of people are saying because of what the council of ministers did recently, it kind of weakens the office of the governor you know I um, I think I think that the government has put the has put the governor in a in a in a in a in a very very awkward position and this is this is my opinion I believe that the governor was so accommodating to the government just to make sure that the is this issue stayed on St. Martin. I think the governor um, tried as much as he could not to have this matter become one where, for example, which he could have done, the governor could have taken the decree um, of the government and basically sent it up for annulment. And he would have cut it off from the, from the very start, from when he told the government that they were supposed to submit their resignation. So not to do that, in not doing that, to me again, um, it dragged on for too long. It dragged on for too long. You're getting an advice here, you're getting an advice there. And then now we find ourselves where we are today. When actually, if you listen to it, the, govern the government is telling the governor, well, unless you sign that decree, we are not going to um, tender our resignation. That seems to be the line that they have drawn. So tomorrow morning when they go over to his office, they want him to sign first. I, and, and I mean, I, the next thing, the next thing they're going to be asking for a notary to be there and see who signed. And, you know, I mean, it is, it is, it is ridiculous. It is really ridiculous. What, you know, if they don't sign tomorrow mm -hmm. because they want the government to sign first, what then, what then? I, um... You know, and that that oral is a question on every on everyone's on everyone's mind. Um, the I the, the the governor is waiting for the for the resignation of the ministers. There are so many stories going on out there about what the government is doing and doing rapidly before they have to leave office. The government. In, um, in coming with this decision to dissolve parliament, thought that they would be in government until, until elections are held. That's, 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 that's what he thought. Um, now that it has happened where the governor has appointed a formateur to go and form the next government, they find themselves in a position. I mean, the stories that are circulating out there are, are, are too crazy to even repeat. And so, so, so what, what, what will happen indeed if tomorrow things do not work out as the government is anticipating? We, we are facing budgetary problems. You think the actions of this uh, outgoing government is going to put us into more debt? 
Well, we, 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 we do have some serious budgetary issues. Um, one being that actually by the 31st of um, October, the government needed to comply with certain um, certain requirements of the CFT. Right now, we don't we don't have an approved 2015 budget to start with. The government um, should have been working on the 2016 budget as well. Again, from reports, we read where. Um, they don't have a, a proposed balanced budget for 2016 either, so we have some serious budgetary problems. And this, what is going on now, is not helping that process, one. It is not creating stability, two. And the argument, the argument that the government is using for their decision to dissolve parliament about they're going to stop the ship jumping, it's going to... Um, it's, it's going to bring about electoral reform. None of that is true. None of that is true. How is it going to stop ship jumping? How, how, how is election, how is an election going to stop that? Unless you put some regulations in place that which everybody's clamoring for the kind of electoral reform and that is not going to happen. Um, in the next three, six, nine months, even a year before you would have that process um, going and where necessary come with, with, with laws. I, I was surprised at the figure given by the Prime Minister of 150,000 gillers the whole election. That's pretty small. I, I, don't know what, I, don't know what it is, I don't know what it is based on. Um, it probably is all that the government could have found because realized that there was no money on the budget 2015 earmarked for election to start with. I guess, I assume, the government from some other post found 150,000 and say we're going to put this towards election. What it is based on, I don't know. With, with all the political fighting that's taking place and the party jumping, we have a serious problem on this island, that's the problem of crime. Yes, for sure. How do you feel about it? Um, you know, that the, the, the government of St. The government of St. Martin, and I think because too many persons pulled at the strings of government. So you did not have, and you still do not have, a collective approach towards the problems that St. Martin is facing crime being one of them. Um, crime is not only about fighting the effects. Of course you want to fight crime, but crime and what we have in terms of crime stem from something. They stem from a lot of things. Why are, um, why are so many crimes being committed? Um, is, it, is it a lack of opportunity? What, what exactly is it? So the other aspects that surround, help create, or whatever it is for crime, those aspects too need to be taken into consideration. But unless you have some type of a collective approach from government, um, you're going to have maybe one minister out there doing his thing, another minister doing their thing, and then a minister of justice trying to fight crime and not having um, the cooperation and the involvement of all of the other ministries that have a role to play where fighting crime is concerned. So the lack of cohesion, the lack of direction is what you're seeing manifesting itself now. I mean, um, when the, I can't speak for the persons who departed from the coalition of 10 that was there, those being, MP Franz Richardson, MP Maurice Lake, and MP Sylvia Matzer. We have heard most of them. In fact, I think all three of them have spoken about the reason why they could no longer support the coalition. What I do know from my position is that the government was totally unresponsive to parliament. Like I tell many persons oral, I, Sarah Westcott Williams, leader of the Democratic Party, was quite comfortable in my role as a representative of the people holding a parliamentary seat. Because my role is and was 
to hold the government accountable. When I pick up things on the, on the, on the, on the street, so to speak, I can question them. I can hold government accountable. I wasn't sitting down in no little corner there hoping for something to happen so that maybe I could have been part of a coalition that would be the next government. Absolutely not. I, 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 was, I was very much, uh, I wouldn't say enjoy the role, but I was, was quite, um, quite happy in, in representing the people of St. Martin. Well, um, so excuse the term, but, uh -huh. they, but they say you've been a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, no, but but really, because I that that is my that is my responsibility, and I took it and still take it very very seriously, you know. So and when I made when I made a choice to um, to join up with the National Alliance, and those persons who left the UP coalition, it wasn't necessarily um, to, to to get into government or to to be part of the government. But I thought that we could ill afford a situation of, um, of uncertainty, of an impasse, even elections at this time, because there's so much to be done. There's so much to be done for this country. And having said that, someone was saying that if tomorrow comes and the current government leaves office, the government that's incoming, mm -hmm. yourself and others, will be a much more experienced government. Um, you know, uh, well, I think, I think it has a lot to do overall with the, the goodwill of the, of the people involved. I think it has a lot to do with the goodwill of the people involved. But you are right. Also understanding government. Also understanding government. When I hear um, some, even, even members of parliament speak about the government, I like, you know, um, you guys are in a position but according to me, do not understand the position that you hold as a member of parliament vis-a-vis -vis the government, vis-a-vis -vis the government. So knowing, knowing, knowing your role is indeed an important part of the, of the whole thing. And I think that is where the problem came because many people in the up felt that the biggest mistake was the time when you left the coalition because had they kept you in the coalition, they will not have you as a pain, as they describe you in the book. <laughs> well, you know, Oral, and, um, and that, that just goes to show, because at that time, I could have sat back too and said, well, you know, I got, I, I got the presidency of, um, of, of, of parliament. Why would I, why would I occupy, or um, as, as, as we would say here on St. Martin, or hot up my head? You know, um, but it was a matter, it was a matter of respect. It was a matter of respect. And I wanted to show those, especially the up members, that um, it was not about a position. The same way how I put, took it up, the same way I could have dropped it. I know, I know you are, um, again, President of Parliament. That's right. Mm -hmm. And can they challenge that? Because some of them were saying that I could be challenged at meeting up for October well, 15th. No, no, absolutely not. And you know, there too, you see where in the absence of um, something to fall back on, like going back and saying, oh, you know, when it happened to us in 2010 or 2012, this is the way we solved it. In the absence of that, we had similar situations. You had him on St. Martin. You had him, for example, on Curacao. And so we have kind of made it work. And that's what you see. Nobody can contest that meeting and say it was an illegal meeting. You know, a lot of the people that are watching what's going on are very, very, very disappointed in politics and politicians as a whole. I know. Um, I, I, and I could, I, could very well, I could very well understand that. The, um, you know, sometimes not being in the, in the, in the fray of things and, and, and carrying the responsibility, um, like for example, that of prime minister, which I carried for four years, you're able sometimes to take a, to take a step backwards and look, at, um, and look at what is happening, you know, on, on St. Martin. And if I feel the way I do, about um, the developments, I can imagine what you know, what others who are not in it, um, how the, what the experience must be like for them. You know, for the 
the average St. Martin are out there. So I can, I can understand that feeling very much. What, what do you think needs to be done immediately once the government that you support takes office? Um, you know, f well, first of all, I think that the, when the government takes office, there should be a sort of a, a, a sweep throughout the ministries. Why do I say this? As I mentioned before, Oral, there are so many stories circulating about things that are taking place in government. Okay. And, um, and we need to find out what, what, what are these things? What is, what is true of, um, of all of the allegations and insinuations? What is true? Um, so that, that, that should happen. Uh, we, we, need to, we need to continue um, with, 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 with a plan, a plan to fight crime like we, we were discussing earlier. The budgetary situation is one that we got to pick up right away. But I think extremely important is the... Um, the communication, the communication between government and the people of St. Martin, letting the people know what is happening, what are the prospects if we're going through a low at this time, what are the prospects for the future, what can we be looking forward to? And um, so I think these are some of the, of the issues that the government needs to, needs to hit, the, hit the ground running. Is it true that CFT made some kind of uh direct, indirect recommendations to sell that huge building that's sitting there on Pond Island that still can be occupied by the government of Samar that was built to be the government administration building? Um, you, you know, actually, actually the, the, the proposals for the new government building, and which is one of the reasons why even after we bought back the building. The reason why the building could still not be occupied is because from a financial perspective, the Minister of Finance saw the possibility to basically make that building um, as, a, as a sort of a payoff of the debt that the government has towards the St. Martin Pension Fund. That has been the key back um, in terms of occupying that building. Remember, Oral, we had court cases going back and forth with RGM. Finally, we were able to get the money to, um, to buy back the building. We bought it back. Then why is the building not in use? Because for a long time, negotiations have been going on with the Pension Fund of St. Martin about them acquiring that building, which will then be looked at as reducing the debt of government to the, um, the pension fund. Is that the case also with uh, the Voss land that was purchased by government and now I understand was sold for uh, one year of the same pension fund? Um, that, no, that, th that is a separate, a separate arrangement that apparently, again, um, the government has now entered into with the, with, the, with the APS. As far as I have been able to determine, that has nothing to do with reducing the debt of government to the APS. What the mm. CFT has indirectly given the government for its consideration, so in other words proposed, is that maybe the government could sell some of its assets, assets like what they have in government-owned companies, you know. So that, that proposal, yes, has been put on the table. And I was coming to that because I understand that uh, that is something that some members of parliament uh, rejected. Um, we really haven't had a discussion. Mr. Richard, not uh, in a formal way, uh -huh, but really. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I could imagine that for sure. <laughs> I could imagine that for sure, for sure that you will have some, um, some, some, some members of parliament and some factions in parliament who would be seriously opposed to, um, to, anything, to anything like that. One of the areas where the government has been totally um, Intransparent has been in the air, in the operations of government of government owned companies. On one hand, um, the, the the ministers are doing what they want with respect to these companies, but when it comes to providing information to the parliament and the people of Saint Martin, then the government tells the parliament that it's hands off. They can they can divulge information. They can't tell parliament anything about what is happening. Um, there are many issues on this island, but there's one. 
with our brothers and sisters from the French side. Now, when I was a young man, I, I worked in Muller Bay, worked with many of them. Today they are retired. They are in the late 60s, uh, 70s, some in the 80s, and they cannot get the share of the money that they paid in while working at Muller Bay Resort and Casino over those years, dating back from the 19th, early 1970s to the, the, the 1980s. How do you feel about this? Yeah. Um, you, you know, coincidentally, it is um, just a couple of days ago that I indicated to, because now, let, let me put it, um, let me start at the beginning. So, yes, you have that situation. Over the years, um, I, have, I have been confronted with individuals who face the, the, the same situation. But now what you have is that the group of persons have been coming together. Um, those now living, many of them retired on the front side and who have worked here. Um, I have asked to have a meeting with the um, SFV. I requested that I have that meeting because there are different reasons why these persons are now um, basically not able to enjoy not even a small amount of pension after having worked many years here. Um, some, some of them, um, you had who, persons who were not officially registered you had um, for which the proof cannot be had that that they have worked because they were not in the in the tax administration I mean you name it so there are different reasons why persons today after having worked so many years here on on Dot St. Martin cannot enjoy a pension so the SZV is now looking at that to see what exactly are the circumstances, the different circumstances that lead to this situation. And um, I hope to be able to meet with the SFV, as I, as I mentioned. I, I called them, I spoke to them, and um, hope to be meeting with them within short so that we can get at least an idea what needs to be done. What needs to be done to rectify the situation? Is it just a, is it just, um, a matter of the information being with the, um, the, the SVB that used to be the Social Security Agency? Is it only that? Is it because these persons fall outside of the law? There is also the issue, Oral, that um, the, even for those who are enjoying a small pension, now li living on Friends St. Martin, um, because they worked over here, the French side is considered foreign territory. So these persons' pension are reduced because they are considered equally to somebody who worked here for whatever amount of years and now is residing abroad. And when you realize that it's just to cross, not, I can't even say a border because there is no border, that in itself shows when these laws, and of course they're very old laws, but when these laws were made, there was no consideration for the uniqueness of St. Martin Saint Martin. So you have that situation as well, and you have where persons, some persons are getting nothing at all. Yeah. So um, in the new government, uh, who will the person that the Democratic Party will propose to be a minister? We, we, we are um, proposing Mr. Emily. Okay. So that, because I had some people call here, mm -hmm. and, and uh, some people were not happy. Mm -hmm. I don't see the reason why they shouldn't be happy with him. He ran for office. He, got people voting for him. That's the, and, and not only that, and not only that, Oral, um, yeah, I mean, that and more. Because what? So you, you put somebody on your slate, but actually in the back of your mind thinking, um, regardless to where he or she places, they will never get an opportunity. You, you know what I'm saying? And many of, the, many of the persons, including some politicians, who are criticizing Mr. Lee have been running behind Mr. Lee. You know, so it, it's, it's, it's hypocritical from some persons the way, the way they look at it. As far as I'm concerned, um, if you are able to run and postulate yourself, people vote for you, you should be able to, because that's, that's, that's why you run. That's why people, I mean, most people would run on a political list because they, 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 they want to be part of the decision making. They want to be elected. That's, that's, why, that's why you run. And in the case of the Democratic Party, we run people who we really believe, if elected, can make a difference, can help, can help steer this country. When you look at the, at the history of uh, the Dutch Caribbean, the former Nelson Tillys, 
we have been very, very, very good at delay, and nothing never happened. And I'm very pessimistic mm -hmm. that anything will happen in the form of rail reform to stop the party jumpers. I don't like the ship, they're party jumpers. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we got to, and, and, I have, and I have committed to this, not only because of what we have now, I committed to it before, because I realize and feel strongly that we, we, need, we need to do some things. We, we, we need clearly, and we can't continue to operate within the system and with the system the way we have it now. Yes, it's going to take some time. Yes, you're going to, you're going to have to find some consensus so that we can get certain things passed in Parliament. But we, we, we have to do something, Oral. Cle clearly, we, we have to do something. But you have any idea or you like to share with us what you think? Oh, surely. I'm be um, surely, Oral, because you see what happened? Um, many people talk about electoral reform as if it is something that you can change one law and that will fix everything. Um, we have, we have a, a basic um, situation that encourages, supports, and even formalizes that members of parliament, once elected to parliament, they, they could do what they want. They don't have to listen to party. They don't have to. They could do what they want. They could leave. They could go. They could declare themselves independent. And that is this matter of voting according to one's conscience without any feedback, any looking back to anyone. That's, 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 that's one thing. That's in your constitution. That can be changed, but it requires a lengthy process of changing your constitution to start with. Okay, put that aside for a moment. We have an electoral law. That's a separate law. You could change some things in there. The way, for example, we, we, elect, we elect persons to office. So you could make changes to our current electoral law. Some people are suggesting, why don't we look at a system itself? Change the electoral system. That too can take place in changes to our, to our electoral law. You have another very important law because that law places the emphasis on political parties and a certain responsibility of parties for their candidates. And that is the law on political um, financing and registration of political parties. That law in there too, because realize that the political party differently than ever before, it is only as per country St. Martin that political parties now have to be registered the articles of incorporation need to meet certain requirements. Polit the parties and their candidates together in getting donations for campaigns need to follow certain requirements, can go beyond certain limits. So the party's collaboration with its candidates and members is very important. However, when, that, when someone is then elected on the slate of the party and ends up in parliament, all at once that breaks away and the member is free to do what he or she wants. In that aspect too, in that law too, we can make some changes. We can put more of an emphasis on what are the responsibilities of the candidate once elected. Because all of the emphasis there is on political party. You need to get registered. You need to have this in your articles of incorporation. You need to file this yearly. You need to do this. You need to do the other. But the candidates who are part of it while you're running through the campaign, once he or she is elected to parliament, basically the party cannot, cannot say anything and they could take their seat. Regardless of how many votes they get to have that seat, they can take that seat and do what they want with it. How many years now since you in politics? Oh, I'm, I'm in politics. Um, the first time I ran in politics, Oral, was in 1990. <laughs> and um, are you surprised? If someone had told you uh -huh. many years ago uh -huh. what's happening now uh -huh. since September 30, 2015, uh -huh. would you say no? Seeing the, the, seeing the players, you know, here he, he you had a, a council of ministers made up of mainly people that were, didn't run for office yeah. except the one. And they basically just uh, said, no, we're not leaving. I'll, 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 tell, you so, I'll, I'll tell you something, um, something better even. 
when you had the situation comparable to what is happening now, where the Council of Ministers is deciding we ain't going nowhere, and, and the, the, the governor thought that, you know, he was doing something good by getting this latest advice. The government said, well, we really don't care about that advice of the three judges. And, but we had something comparable that happened in 2012 on Curacao. I being up here, I being prime minister, and looking at those developments down there, and the prime minister too refusing, actually refusing to leave, to leave office, period. And I like, whoa. And in my mind, I'm saying, um, imagine, look at, look at what is happening down there. And the furthest thing from my mind was that something like that would ever be able to happen up here. But um, I, was, I, was, I was mistaken. But then people I was said mistaken. that prime minister uh, had many people voted for him. Yeah, and, and, and indeed, in, indeed. And that, 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 that is a fact. That here, is a fact. Here you have... And I think this is where a lot of the people on Simranya today uh, are angry, disappointed, in that you name people to office. Yeah. You have an entire government mm -hmm. th that just refuses to follow yeah. the wishes of the people who put them there in the first and, place. And that's, and, that's, and that's the crux. And that's the, and that's the crux. And you know, oral, even in the event of, even in the event of, um, let's say let's 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 say MP Teo Heiliger, for example, had um, he 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 is elected to parliament. Let's say that he has done, he did as he promised people he would, and would have become prime minister. Somebody else would have gotten his seat in parliament. Somebody of the up, of course, would have gotten his seat in parliament. But even like that, the fate of him in the seat of prime minister would have been dependent on the support in parliament. So let alone, let alone someone um, who has not been elected. Let me call a name. Minister of Justice, Mr. Dennis Richardson. Uh -huh. He's the kind of guy that just gets everything done. He convinced the Dutch mm -hmm. to go left when they want to go right. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy that I think more than anyone else understands and what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then even the the leader of the National Alliance says he's very disappointed in it. Yeah. From what has transpired in the last few yeah, weeks. Yeah, you know, and, and, and again, I, I, ask, I ask myself, who is pulling what strings? You know, is it really, is it really that, um, that um, Prime Minister Marcel Gomes is, 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 is so, you know, well, this is a fight. This is a fight, and I ain't going away. Is it really that he is seeing it like that? Because the arguments he's using um, don't hold water, can't hold water. So is it really, is it really um, Marcel Gums who is, 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 is standing in this position and who should know better, just like the Minister of Justice? They, they should know better. Or is it somebody else pulling the strings from, you know, we, we think you should go for elections now? I, 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 I don't know. Oral Gibbs live on caller. Hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Um, MP Tia Helena just fooled the people. She will never accept minister, prime minister. That was just to get votes. It just was a gimmick to get votes. She can't do the standard attack. Bye bye. Good night. Okay, good night. Uh, I guess um, the prime minister job is not an easy job. I mean, you held it for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it is, it is, it is not. And you know, Oral, um, one of the big differences between being prime minister and, for example, holding a seat in parliament, especially in my case, as prime minister, you, you have to, to a certain degree, um, keep everything within the council of ministers. You, you know what I'm saying? Because the, uh, one of the responsibilities of the prime minister is to maintain the unity of the government. That's one thing. Um, decisions taken by the Council of Ministers are basically um, confidential. So while some people would say, but why didn't you speak up 
speak up out about that or this or whatever have you? Of course I did, but in the confines of the Council of Ministers. Um, why didn't I speak to a minister about something that he or she did? Oh, yes, I did, and very often so. But now, as a member of parliament, I can, I can speak out and, and, and question and question government, you know. So, yeah, the, the, the job of prime minister is not an easy one. A lot of people also look to um, former um, minister of justice, uh, Mr. Roland Duncan, and said, here's a man who really shows the way it should be. When the time came, he didn't stick around, he left. Yes, in, in, indeed, indeed, you know, and, um, and yeah, and, and those kind of things, he, the minute the, he was, was, he said it, and when it came to pass, he acted accordingly. He said, no, no, if, 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 um, if they want me to go, then they have to, they have to come with a motion of non-confidence. The minute that came down, the minute that was expressed, that there was no confidence in the government um, of which he was part, he tendered his resignation. And I think that's the way our uh, future politicians should, should deal with issues like that. No, for, for sure. And, and again, and again, um, overall, that Article 33, because imagine again, just let's keep it simple, forget all the theoretical discussions about, about it, but imagine that the parliament is supposed to, um, to control the government. I mean, that, 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 that is clear. And imagine any time you express your dissatisfaction as a parliament like we have done on many occasions with the government and then the government would just go across to their office and say well you know the way the, the way the parliament carried on today they just might be thinking about coming with a motion on non-confidence so what we do we go and we invoke article 59 so anytime anytime the parliament mm -hmm. looks to chastise, if you want to call it that, the government, then the government is going to be able to hold up the, the, the Article 59 card. It could never be because then, 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 then make it that the people electing the government and no parliament in between. Right, but, um, you know, a, a lot of people are looking for a lot from this incoming government. I They're know. looking mm -hmm. to you all to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Are you all prepared for that? Well, Oral, the, um, the, 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 the government that I will be supporting is going to really, is going to really have to, 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 to do its best. I know that the times are challenging. Um, I know we don't have many resources, but we, we, there are indeed high expectations, and the government is going to have to give it its best. The only guarantee that I can give to the people of St. Martin, that as long as I have breath, um, this is what I will be fighting for, even with the government that I'm supporting. All right, so again, uh, I want to wish you much success, and we have 30 seconds in close. And anything else you want to add? Thank you for the opportunity, Oral. I think um, discussions about our future, about our political developments um, are healthy. We just, as a government and as a parliament, need to know our role and abide by that. Well, thank you for being here, and much success. Thank you, thank you. That's it for now. See you next time. Till then, good night, take care, bye.